Good evening, everybody. This is indeed Thursday Live. My very special um, videographer is still on her way. So here is Kaylee. Kaylee, thank you for um, joining us. <laughs> we are going to share some creative and amazing paint techniques this afternoon. Um, we are just going to swap the camera around. Okay, and we're ready to rumble. So behind me is an old piece, a furniture piece, that has actually received so many coats of paint. And when I sanded it earlier today, I could actually see the colors revealing themselves as, um, and as every color reveals itself, I can remember the time and the point when those were painted. So even that is very special. I'm going to start on this piece to show you. Um, so in my paint jars, I've got all bits and bobs of paint left, right? So I want to extend this to make sure that with the last drops of paint, I can create something amazing. So there's my stencil of Paris, last little bit. I will never dip a rusted applicator in a jar that I know I want to use again. But I know I'm going to finish this for this project and only then do you scoop from your jar and use especially rusted dirty equipment. If you're not sure if your equipment is clean, wipe it with our chopper wipes properly. Um, before you dip it in and wash it, it needs to be completely clean. This is, it, we don't see if there's any contaminants or anything dirty on our tools. And if you work directly into your paint jars, you will contaminate your paint better to decant or use a clean plastic spoon that was wiped well with a wipe, completely hygienic and clean and scoop as you need. Okay, and then also, Put on the lid immediately because another contaminant is air. You don't want air into your paints, but I know this is the last drop and I'm going to finish it. Okay, so I'm just scooping out some stencil of Paris paste, but I know I need to extend it because I want to finish the entire furniture piece with the last bits and pieces. And you'll actually see how far you've come with everything. So I'm just mixing some paint. So I have a canvas underneath me. Um, so that for those that's new and doesn't know what the stencil of Paris is, it is actually a paste that we use mostly when doing stencil work to create an embossed finish. But we have plastered walls with it. We have created such amazing paint techniques with it. And today um, marks another example. So I'm just making it quite runny, but still a nice thick consistency. The reason why I want to apply this is I want to create texture on my furniture piece so that it is not painted flat. Okay, some basic preparations for those that not that is not familiar with charcoal. You can paint straight onto a varnished surface after you've cleaned it properly with lacquer thinners more than once. And your varnish needs to be older than six months. So varnish takes a time to cure, usually six months, and only then all the evaporation has happened and then you can start painting onto it. With chocolate, you don't need to sand it down, but you do need to clean properly with a lacquer thinners. More than once, allow it to evaporate completely. Now evaporation timelines are influenced by temperatures and weather and seasons. The colder, the more humid, the longer things stay to dry. So keep that into account. Um, anything from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on humidity and season and temperature. Okay, on my canvas, I have now some stencil of Paris paste. It is nice and thick. Um, and I'm not going to start playing with that. I am going for this purpose. I found some brushes in my garage, so no judgment, right? Um, late last night, so I have a few tools here. I'm going to start with a stencil brush. And just to show the process that was followed on this piece, 
So the colour that I'm painting onto now, or spreading the paste onto, is um, Creative Crystal, Mom. I think if you see this, you're thinking, what did I spend so much time to paint this? If you didn't paint it like this, the result would never be as amazing as it is. Um, so the green is absolutely beautiful. I am going to keep certain sections still in the green. However, just for everything to form a unit um, with a technique that I'm busy applying, I am going to sand so that everything on this piece tells the same story. So I'm putting some stencil on Paris. As you can see, I'm not doing it perfect, right? I want imperfections, because in the imperfections, in, in, in the unevenness of, of it all, later we are going to apply antique glaze, and it will actually sit in those grooves and imperfections that I'm busy creating. So there's purpose to the madness. Okay, so I'm sure this process makes sense. And you can decide, so you can blotch certain areas, other areas make it uneven. You do want to create this line uneven effect. Okay, now once again, the sun has set already, and this is going to take a while to dry. And I'm just going to let it dry. So you are not going to see this result, the finished item, um, very soon, because I'm leaving tomorrow morning very early for Namibia. Namibia, I'm, I hope you have rested well for the week ahead, because we are going to change the color and scenery of Namibia. We have a few workshops lined up, if you're not sure where and what, please go follow our socials and come and join us for the fun. We can't wait to meet you all. Okay, so this is it. It's imperfect, it's fine. At any point in time when this has dried, you can apply another coat, you can make more uneven, um, or you can sand where you want to create even and even finish. Okay, that is step one. I hope it makes sense. Now I'm going to proceed to step two. So here on this section we are going to do step two. I do want to share a trick. So depending on the thickness of the stencil of Paris application and also your temperatures, you might see that sometimes some, some cracking appears. How to get rid of this is simply sand. And you will see all those hairline cracks will disappear. Not that it matters to me because I do want an imperfect um, to surface to start the next technique on. And now what I'm going to do, so Creative Crystal was painted over here. Can you just quickly see what's happening behind you? Oh, maestro. Maestro saw us packing our bags and I'm sure he knows that something is about to happen. I'm so sorry. If I could, I would have fit you into my bag, I promise, Maestro. Oh, yeah. Okay, now the two colors, actually three, that we are going to work with um, is Davit. So here's Davit. Creative Crystal is on the furniture piece. I'm going to also add, just to darken and also mute Gracious, um, I'm going to use Lady Lisa. You can see Lady Lisa was a lot in hues. So there's Lady Lisa, Davit, and Gracious. On my, on my um, canvas over here, I'm going to just decant small drops There's some Lady Lisa. Here's a last drop of Davit. And here is some Gracious, very close to the Lady Lisa, because the brown will actually mute the green, that it ties in better 
where that creates of crystal color so that everything just works. The colors marry, we say. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to start painting over my stencil of Paris. And this does not need to be perfect, right? I am going to mix some of the brown and green together. And what I want to do is from the bottom, sorry Kaylee, this is now such a tight corner, but this furniture piece is too big to move out here. I'm just brushing so that where the two wet colors meet, I'm actually moving my paintbrush more so that that just blends together. Okay. And there I'm going to add a little bit more green. And here you can, oh, my stress ball is underneath my feet. Here you can play. So it doesn't need to be perfect. You can be playful. So there's almost like an ombre effect. It goes from slightly dark to light. And to show you in the cupboard at the back, Kayla, you must tell me if this is going to be visible. Okay. So yeah, I've already started playing, but I want to show you. So it's actually create the freedom. You just brush. Let me put more so it's more better visible. So here's like a dry brush technique. And you can go over and you can brush again. And sideways. And let's add some green and brown. Can you see it? Is it visible? And actually what you do is you just... create chaos but it is very subtle chaos. And it's simply moving the brush, you can see at the bottom, moving the brush sideways up and down, nothing is painted perfectly. Okay, then what I'm going to do, and for this purpose I'm almost going to remove what I've done here, just so that the next step makes sense, okay? Because I have already washed this last night, just for life purposes that the next step is visible. So what I'm going to do next, you have now created um, texture. You've allowed for the texture to dry. You can also, while the texture is wet, guys, okay, because time for me is always something that's very tricky and very, um, very few. So let me show you if you are, if you have time constraints, this is also something that you can consider. So in my paste, on my canvas, I'm going to make two sections. One for my light, which is my divot. So my light color over here. And I'm mixing it with my stencil of Paris. So there's some texture and paint mixed together. And then over here, and I'm going to use this, that brush for that application. And then this, so it's not a perfect paint technique, what we are creating, oh, a perfect smooth painted finish that we're creating. We want to create texture. So the older your brushes, the more worn, the better. Now what I'm going to do is at the top, we have just created texture. You are now pressured for time, right? You don't have time for things to dry. Maestro is putting his ball everywhere where he knows I'm going to move. Okay. Now, on top of my texture, it's still wet. I start painting with my paint mixed into my, let's do that in classic. Mixed into my paste to create texture. And what I do is I do some color over. And you do want to create 
light and dark, brush over. I never know what things look like to the camera. Kelly, does it look neat? Okay, so there's some touches of green and brown, there's touches of light, there's touches of texture. Now this entire step was completed. Step one and two that I've shown below was finished in one step. And now you can be playful with your work. So you can add some colors here and there. Just do want to add a blob of green on that side. Very subtle, the colors need to mix. It needs to look elegant, needs to look professional. So nicely blend it in. So there's texture and subtle color that ties in with what's happening here. Now, my texture and paint has dried, whether you want to play afterwards or you want to do everything together. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to, with other antique brown clays, I'm now going to create drama, but subtle drama, elegant drama. So the antique brown glaze for those that have, that have never um, used it before, it is there to actually sit in the grooves and crevices and create depth. What I do is, you will also find it on the instructions of the lid, you add a third water. So it's three parts antique brown glaze, one part cooled boiled water and one part matte black. Now you can see I have mixed this last year when we did our national workshops and this is still left over and it's still fine. Why? Cooled boiled water was added to the container. I never use a paintbrush in my jar if I know I'm going to reuse it. Very important. And then um Seal it well afterwards, okay? You are going to see you are going to need very little. What I'm going to do in the crevices, the grooves, I'm going to paint the antique round lace. Work small areas at a time, but everything and anything can be fixed. Better to work small areas at a time. Why? It dries quite quickly. And with a damp cloth, I don't have mutton cloth. So I'm just using my microfiber cloth. I wash it afterwards and I use it for all my other paint techniques. You wipe away. And you wipe away until you are happy with the drama you are creating. So you do want the detail in the grooves and the crevices. You do want to add some depth there. Damp cloth, greatest tip for this technique, small areas at a time. The other tip, move your, bra your cloth around as you see it becomes too dirty so that with a clean cloth you can wipe away until you're happy with the outcome. Now imagine you want a darker antique finish. So if I were to do this and not wipe away as much. Everything is personal preference, remember? You are going to do what makes you happy. I am just going to wet it more. So I'm going to wipe away less. Softly, gently, patiently. And there's a very dark version compared to a very light version on that side. So everything is about personal preference. For this purpose, I just want the, um, the grooves and crevices and actually the detail that I've created with my stencil of Paris face to be visible. And the rest very subtle. Okay, 
So I'm sure this technique makes sense. Now, say for instance, let's do it. Let's do it here. I have now created a disaster and I am so happy because I'm still practicing and I'm not sure what I'm doing. And now what has happened is things look very uneven to me, right? So there's nice and even, there's very uneven. How do I fix it? There are always ways of fixing everything. Now, one of the greatest advantages of choco is the fact that everything is water-based. So you can see I'm working with water. It's kind to nature, it's kind to my pet, it's kind to my children, and it's kind to me that's trying to be an artist. So you don't need to be anxious. How am I going to fix this? With my paint, I'm simply going to paint on top. And I'm going to hide my imperfection because I can. I am able to fix anything and correct it again. Where are, where's the mistake? Where? Who saw a mistake? It's gone. Okay. So that is the greatest advantage of Choco is the fact that you can play and experience and feel a sense of self-worth because you can do it. And if you struggle at any point of time, we are there. We are a joyful, happy bunch to come and assist you. You just click on that WhatsApp logo on our website or on the Choco Creations or Choco Try Facebook group and you ask for how we are there. We also have an email address, support at chocopay.co.za. I think Liki wants to throttle me if she hears that I'm sharing her email address so freely. If you don't, if you want to email me, nadine at chocopay.co.za and we will assist. Okay, I'm just going to quickly fix my corrections. Just important for that with the antique brown clays, everyone. I'm not being very reckless. If the paint needs to dry, and be properly dry before you apply it, right? More or less four hours are recommended. I'm not being very reckless and I'm just um, not following those rules. What will happen if there's no paint coat underneath that has cured and dried properly? You will find that the tea glaze will wipe away your paint because the paint first needs to set, it needs to grip to the surface before we start using it, but then you can use it. With a wet cloth, chocolate grips to the surfaces. It just needs time to do that. So once again, temperatures and weather play the largest role. So we recommend anything from four hours, summer temperatures, to 24 hours and even very cold, very humid temperatures, 48 hours before you wipe with water or the glaze on the surface. Those are extreme temperatures. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next, and this is also going to be reckless, I just have to find it, is we are launching a stunning new stencil range, which I am extremely excited about. One of them, this is actually one stencil, I've just cut it up because that is how I was imagining to use this. So this is 24 A3-4. So this is one stencil, I've just cut it, but this is specifically a border stencil. So there's a border, look how stunning this border is, look how amazing this one is for chest of drawers, and I'm going to use this one for the unit. Now I didn't want to use and open more paints, so I thought, let me do it, I don't want a perfect stenciled technique, right? If you want perfect, you stencil with paint. If you want reckless, you are going to do what I'm now going to do. And then you're not going to complain if it's not perfect, but because this is not meant to be perfect. This is meant to be reckless. Okay. So I'm actually going to stencil with my antique brown glaze because I want the exact same color that I have um, created in these grooves and crevices. And you will see afterwards, we are going to sand it as well. Okay, same tip apply as with, applies as with um, normal stenciling. You need very little paint. So I just want to, on my drop sheet, just remove most. I don't want runny stencil work underneath my stencil. 
So you can see my stencil brush is extremely dry, but it's filled with antique brown glaze. Okay? Reckless, not perfect. Now I'm going to push my stencil in here. The masking tape, I've all used it already today. So it won't stick anymore, but it actually allows a larger border so that I don't move with my stencil brush on the beautiful look that I've just created. And what I do very imperfect is I just stencil. Okay, I want to do the same that side. I'm not going to go all the way down. I just want to show what needs to be done. I think you know what the steps are. Okay. And I will then, this is so nice because you can simply move it down. I'll see where I've, and this is why this is such nice border stencils. And a lovely collection actually. And you will also find that you won't need to dip your stencil brush in that tea glaze again. You can complete this entire section and more with what is on your brush. Okay, there's the stencil work done. Now the fun is going to start. Remember in the beginning I said that there are layers and layers and layers of paint on my surface. Um, from all the years. I am now going to create a sanded finish and I do want to share it with you because this is called like a two-tone distress where you can see the different colors re revealing itself. Just going to get rid of that masking tape. I'm just going to allow for that to dry a bit. Kelly is going to switch off the sound so that this is not irritating um, your ears. But then you can just see what is going to happen. Okay, and you can decide how much you want to sand away. Do you want this to be more visible? I might just come back with a stencil again and just make some of these pieces darker. You can even leave it like that. But look at the sanding, how it just brings out everything. So another tip is before you stencil, to maybe first stand, then stencil. 
and then you have these imperfections underneath your stencil work. That's also something that can be done. I just want the stencil work to disappear, personally, but it's completely up to me. Now, when this is done, it's done. If you are going to place this furniture piece in a bathroom or where there's a lot of moisture, or if you don't like a matte finish, you rather want a subtle satin finish, then you can apply our clear glass. But if you don't want to, I don't want to, I love it as is. It looks authentic, it looks beautiful, it's natural, it's stunning. Chalk or doesn't leave a chalky residue, it grips to the surface. It is perfect as it is. So it's also that step is a personal choice. And there is the final that I've done um, earlier today. So here you now can see. Um, so there is just the brush with the different colors and then I've sanded as well. But you can see on the surface there is some texture. Here I've sanded so that you can actually see the previous color, which was fine lining appearing. Here you can see texture, um, color, wood, and as easy as that. And at the back, there's a lot of drama happening. But easy peasy, as easy as that, is just to get going, to try it, to experience it, and to experience the success and the, just the feeling that it's something that I have created. I am here to just give the inspiration. You do you. And you be proud of you. Because you should. Um, it was lovely being here with everyone. Have a fabulous week ahead. Um, we are going to share our Namibian experiences with you all. Believe in yourself. Till next time. Mama Choco signing out.